Hi, my name is Giuliano Mingardo. I work for the Erasmus University of Rotterdam for the Department of uh, Regional Port and Transport Economics. Uh, my specialization is in parking management and mobility management. And today I will tell you something about uh, urban mobility and the role of parking, especially parking economics and parking management. I hope you will uh, learn something useful today. Welcome to this uh, Civitas e-course uh, on uh, uh, sustainable urban mobility. Um, today I'm uh, going to tell you something about uh, urban mobility and parking. Uh, well, I hope you will uh, learn important concepts and the basic issues that you can apply to your daily job in order to make uh, better parking policies uh, that will help your city to create a better uh, living environment for citizens, visitors and all other stakeholders. So why parking is important for, for cities? Well, uh, parking has been uh, recognized as one of the main sources of uh, uh, urban traffic. Uh, so the, why, the, the reason why people use a car, well, has a lot to do with the parking, well, because you end every uh, uh, car trip ends up in a parking space. Uh, so parking is very important because it helps to manage traffic in urban areas. Uh, additionally, parking can give an important contribution to the development of a quality of life in cities. And uh, last but not least, it might be an important source of income for many local authorities. Parking policies uh, can contribute to, uh, to the development of a sustainable uh, urban transport system because first, because they manage car traffic. Uh, and uh, so, in, and, and so it's a very effective uh, instrument to manage car traffic. Second, because they can create revenues that can be used for uh, stimulate other uh, forms of transport rather than car use. Uh, for example, in the Netherlands, you have several cities that uh, uh, use a part of the income uh, generated by parking uh, fees to stimulate uh, public transport or bicycle or other uh, sustainable mobility uh, options. So what are the, the basic of, uh, basics, uh, things you have to remember when uh, uh, you try to develop a parking policy? Well, uh, first of all, that uh, uh, parking policy uh, evolves uh, uh, in all cities in the same way. So all cities follow the same development partner when, uh, pattern when it comes to parking policy. Uh, so they first introduce a time restriction and then they start to, in, in, to use the instrument of paid parking. Uh, well, uh, in the beginning, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, let's say, it's a, a reactive policy. So you see, when you have a problem, you react to it and you come with a solution. Uh, at a certain moment, we see that pay parking is not enough. You have to do something else. And then cities have to make uh, choices. Uh, you can uh, start to uh, develop a park and ride system around the city. You might uh, start to work with uh, differentiated parking prices. Uh, you can differentiate per time of the day, per days of the week, or per type of vehicles. Uh, you can try to use, uh, to make a several, uh, multiple use of the same parking facilities. So trying to use the same parking facilities more often. So for example, uh, the parking location of a theater, you can be used uh, at the evening for, during the evening and night for a theater and during the day for the maybe employee or employees of an uh, office ne nearby. And, uh, or you can even, there are some cities even trying to uh, even introduce some special uh, uh, levies or taxes on uh, um, the, uh, the use of parking for uh, employees in the city. So what's the relationship between uh, parking and access regulations? Well, uh, actually they can coexist to, uh, together because, uh, uh, well, parking is a form of uh, uh, managing uh, urban uh, transport and urban car transport. Uh, so actually, if you want to manage the number of cars entering the city, you can use, of course, parking policy. You might use other form of car uh, access regulation, like a congestion charge in London or uh, other example. Uh, well, uh, parking usually is more um, uh, accepted. I mean, there are many cities that already have a, a kind of parking policy, so it might be easier for many cities to work further to develop the parking policies than not to develop a brand new access restriction uh, policy. Uh, it might have some advantages because parking usually has a less cost to implement, uh, while an, an access restriction policy might be quite expensive if it involves a, a specific technology. And of course, uh, uh, parking can, uh, well, uh, it has the price mechanism, can be relatively easy used in a parking policy. So it means that you can, you might decide to increase the price people pay for parking in order to manage uh, the demand of uh, car travel. By far, parking, it is a pricing instrument. Uh, uh, oh well, when introduced, paid parking becomes a pricing instrument. It can also be a, simply a time management instrument when you simply have a time restrictions. 
uh, once you use the uh, price, it becomes a price instrument. That means that you can use the price uh, mechanism to uh, well try to influence behavior of people. Uh, generally speaking, we know that uh, uh, well, uh, parking demand is quite uh, price inelastic. That means that well, uh, a price might, uh, uh, if you increase the price, uh, uh, the reduction in travel uh, is, is not that large. And that is a consequence because, generally speaking, car travel is a price inelastic. Generally speaking, um, cities, when, when, when in a city it becomes to be uh, quite uh, congested, quite uh, busy, well, then you have to manage the space and you have to manage the car traffic. Uh, and, well, when time is not enough to manage the time restriction in parking, you start to use a price mechanism. Well, this var varies uh, quite, uh, uh, quite a lot uh, among different cities. Uh, well, you see that the most attractive cities are those that also can ask uh, the higher parking fee. Um, well, usually uh, uh, this has absolutely no detrimental effect on the economy. On the other side, it stimulates economic activity because uh, when, you, well, uh, when you offer a, a, a scarce product for, for the right price, you generate the right economic uh, consequences. For example, we might, uh, uh, we might consider the case of Madrid, uh, city, the, the capital of Spain, introduced in 2014 a specific way to pay for a parking fee uh, that is related to the car that you have. And uh, so the, the idea is that, uh, well, uh, the more the car pollutes, the higher is the parking fee. Uh, uh, you have to pay. That, is do that has been done in, in order to reduce the uh, emission caused by car traffic. So they hope to stimulate uh, the, the use of more uh, clean vehicles. Well, this is a, a one example. Other example of parking fees can be used to uh, manage uh, traffic, uh, for example, in the city of Amsterdam, or the city of Rotterdam in the Netherlands, uh, they use uh, uh, the price instrument to try to reduce the number of cars entering in the city and uh, to manage, so to have an optimal uh, 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 number of cars entering the city. Uh, this has also positive effect for the local economy because it's, uh, uh, let's say, if you have uh, the right price, there is always enough space for the people that are willing to come. And that's very important because one of the biggest issues with car traffic within cities is a surge traffic. Uh, and that uh, happens when, uh, well, when parking is for free or is not, uh, uh, the price is not right. What happens is many people use the car to park in the city. Uh, well, that uh, creates more demand than what the supply is. And then people uh, keep uh, looking for a parking space and travel all around the city. And that generates uh, additional traffic. That's, very, that's, that's a, a huge problem. When you use the right price, well, that automatically, automatically there will be less car entering the city. And then they, easily, they can easily find a, a place and that reduce the, uh, the amount of traffic generated for, search, for searching a parking place. We can mention a number of uh, important uh, uh, misunderstandings in terms of parking policy. The first one that parking can be free of charge. Uh, uh, there is no such a thing as a uh, free parking. Uh, so uh, someone has to pay uh, the cost of parking. And that, of course, is a political decision, whether the city decides uh, uh, who is going to pay that, uh, uh, the parking cost, uh, if it's the visitor, the residents, or a little bit of uh, both of them. Uh, so the first one says so free parking does not exist. Someone has to pay the, uh, the price for it. Um, a second uh, most important misunderstanding is that uh, um, the relationship between parking and retail, uh, the retail sector, that the no parking, no business, uh, that's uh, an important misunderstanding because uh, many shop owners and uh, retailers uh, think that uh, any policy that try to reduce the number of cars entering the city might be uh, um, a problem for their business. While there is absolutely no evidence uh, that uh, this is the case, on the other side, uh, if thanks to parking policy, uh, you create a better uh, uh, quality of life in the city, the city becomes more attractive and that will attract more uh, customers to your city. It is a, a, a effect that uh, the most, for example, in the Netherlands, the most attractive uh, uh, shopping streets of the Netherlands are those also the, the highest uh, uh, parking fee. And that's why, because, because they are the most attractive areas of the city, that's why uh, you have to pay for it. And, uh, um, but uh, this misunderstanding of no parking, no business uh, uh, is a pure emotional uh, concept. Um, but there is no uh, scientific evidence that's true, that is true. 
Well, when it comes to, uh, to develop an, a good parking policy, I have uh, three lessons for you. Uh, the first one is to get uh, the price right. The second is to uh, invest in communication. And the third is to in involve the all stakeholders. Uh, getting the price right, what's well, very important, uh, if the price is too high, uh, well, simply you will not have um, enough people coming to your city, uh, well, then you have a problem. If the price is too low, there are too many cars coming to the city, then you also have a problem. Uh, there is no magic formula for the price, uh, sometimes it's a trial and error. Uh, but generally speaking, we know that uh, uh, the, the, the demand for uh, parking, like the, de the demand for car travel, is quite price inelastic. So my, uh, my, my advice to your city would be don't be afraid to, to charge for parking. Uh, the second uh, lesson is about the communication. That's very important. Um, don't tell people simply that they have to pay. Tell, also them, to tell them also why they have to pay. You have to explain why you have a parking policy. You explain that you do it to manage traffic in the city, to make the city better, and not simply just to, to, to cash some, to some money. Uh, third lesson is to involve all stakeholders, and for stakeholders means the residents of the city, uh, the retail sector, uh, business sector, and of course also the visitors. Uh, well, again there you have to understand what are the needs, uh, what is the function of your city? Some city might have more a touristic function, of a shopping function, of a leisure function, or more, or more a business uh, uh, function. Well, but you, you have to involve the stakeholders in the, in the, in the, in the planning process so that they are uh, actually, in, in a way that they are informed about what they are doing, and in a way to create societal support for your policy that will help then a city council to easily take the decision about the parking policy. Uh, I would like to thank you for taking this uh, Civitas e-course and uh, I hope you learn uh, something that will be useful for you in your professions and that you will be able to use it uh, in order to improve uh, well, the attractiveness and quality of life in your cities.